Okay, so the question here is, how did I develop the ability to um, not announce my offers as far in advance as possible? What I mean is that um, you'll notice that I, I typically give like about a two week notice for when my next course begins. The only exception is if it's a like a six month or 12 month group program, then I will announce it like at least a month in advance, if not two months in advance, because that's a bigger investment. But my typical programs, my courses that are, um, you know, five months, five weeks, basically five, three to five, three to six weeks long, I just allow a two week uh, notice to say, hey, I'm starting in two weeks. And uh, if you want to join me. And um, the reason why I started doing this is because I've been in marketing, you know, for 12, 13 years. And early on, I started noticing that some of the most successful marketers often announced things starting within three days. Um, so it's not unusual in my industry to give just a one to seven day notice. And so knowing that, I'm like, God, two weeks is pretty generous, you know. And I've also noticed that if um, I know, you know, I don't, I don't have studies to back this up necessarily, but um, I, more of an anecdotal uh, evidence thing. But, but if I launch something too far in advance, um, there's, well, number one, if, it, if I launch a four week in, you know, four weeks in advance, then uh, the audience has to see marketing messages for four weeks or they're like sell, sales messages for four weeks. And that is less pleasant than seeing sales messages for two weeks. Sales messages, sales messages overall are not pleasant. I mean, we just have to be open about that, right? Like, it's not pleasant for someone to say, will you, will you take your hard-earned money or hard-saved money and spend it with me? Will you trust me on this? And if you don't trust me, you might feel like you're missing out on something, or you might feel like you're offending me by not buying in when you say you're a fan. <laughs> okay, so, so sales messages are, are not just to be honest, it's not pleasant for either party. I mean, it's, you know, of course, sales experts are going to say, no, oh, we're going to make it, make it fun and make it like enjoyable for everyone when we're selling. Yeah, sure. You can make, you can always make selling more, more enjoyable. Obviously I have a whole book on that called authentic selling. So I know what that's all about, but if money were no issue, right. And if, if enrollment were no issue, no one would ever sell anything because it's like, why would you well, you know, why, why wouldn't you just always give, 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 because that's always the most pleasant thing for humanity, right? Give, give, give. So, um, so yes, so <laughs> those are all the reasons why, um, you know, uh, oh, and also the, the, the other reason why, you know, four weeks or six weeks or whatever um, is, is why I don't do that is because people sometimes forget that they signed up for something. Um, it's like four weeks ago, I signed up for this thing and I've, I have, so, so what's also, I've also noticed to be true is that um, energy around a product is highest when someone first buys something, you know, it's like, it's, so it's like the ideal situation is actually when you buy something, you can instantly access it because at that point, you're, you know, you're, you're most excited about it rather than great. I'm going to buy something and wait. Four weeks before I can access it. Yay. I mean, unless there's, unless the marketer seller has uh, very skill, is very skillful at building up excitement over the four weeks, two weeks or whatever to say, all right, it's coming, it's coming, 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 uh, or have something to, to, to work with first before the product is delivered. Um, otherwise, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's better to instantly experience something or at least, you know, within, within, within a, a week or two. So, those are all the reasons why. Um, and yeah, so if you have any follow-up questions to this, we can certainly discuss. Yeah, and, and thanks uh, to Allison for the chat here. People could also second guess their decision if they're waiting a long time. Yeah, they for, forgot about the excitement of it rather than getting in and experiencing the product. Um, yeah, and, and, and Angie says, you know, there's commitment phobia too. You know, I rarely sign up for things too far in advance. Oh, and then another really important thing I forgot to mention is that, you know, people ask me, George, do you have a course calendar for the year? Like, what are you going to be launching the year? And I always, I mean, for my, 
group program participants, people who are who are committed to me, you know, to working with me for a whole year, I want to give them everything. And they, of course, they get access to everything. So it makes sense for me to tell them the entire year's calendar in advance. But I always say, this is tentative. You know, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to be teaching these four topics, five topics this year, but, and it's probably going to be these months, but I, I've, I've seen this over 10 years. I frequently change what topics I'm teaching during the year. It's not like I change within two, four weeks, but I usually change within one to two months in advance. Like, oh, you know what? I was going to teach this two months from now, but I'm going to do a different one now. So that's another reason why I don't like to, you know, it's for my own flexibility. I don't want to announce things too far in advance. Yeah. 